Bye, buddies. Oh, yeah, the one I missed earlier. Maybe it's down here. I didn't go along this piece of wall, even though it's not a wall, but still. Nah, I don't see it. It's probably up there. Hold up, guys. Just gonna do some climbing real quick. I should be able to make it. It's just gonna take me about half an hour to get up there. And I should probably go on top of that because it gets me higher. Well, further out. You knew what I meant. I'm just conscious of using all my stamina and then falling. You know? I still think this is a weird climbing animation. Yeah, I don't think the, the paper thing's here. Looking at the icon on the map. And yet, I stand corrected. Whee! Now that, now it can stop harassing me. Gentlemen, I am returning. Oh, it's, it literally wants me to go this way. Okay, fine. Wait, where's Al 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 Beatsy? So, oh wait, it's not you two. Sorry, I thought that was Cape and Barbarano. <laughs> My bad. Question: Have we secured enough to grab Kirara? No, not even. Oh no, hold on. Hold on, they unlock as I go along. After you have obtained a certain number of exits of bliss, you can unlock Jocund Letter Gadget. The letter can search the, for experts in a nearby fixed nearby radius. Use it well to easily obtain excerpts. This is what we had in the last event we had. I don't need it. I nailed it. I don't have them all, but I don't even care. Good grief, there are 51 more. Don't care. Ah, oh, get my progress. You better watch out. There's a cat burglar about. Phantom and boots. Doesn't have quite the same ring to it. Who's this little baddie? Yay. We did it. Kirara. You have an outfit. I like your normal outfit though. It it, it suits you and it's in a zoom in, which makes sense. Anyway, uh, here. There you go. Scaling wall. May as well. I don't think I will ever use you, but you can go right ahead. And let's equip the letters, even though, again, we'll never use it. Pia! I was busy looking at the map. Ah, uh, there's nothing, obviously, in my vicinity. Can we redo that? Hold on, is that... I don't know what its radius is, but anyway, let me do that again so I can actually watch what happens on my screen. Oh, that's so pretty! I really like that. Anyway. The cohort of truth seekers followed Albizzi to his clan's sacred site. They arrived to the site of a giant guard towering over them. Up ahead is my clan's gigantified guard. He can be a little pig-headed, and he's incredibly strong. Your weapons won't even scratch him. Is there a point? Wait, but wasn't Cape's clan the one that's all about strength? So, what do you guys believe in then? No, wasn't Cape's clan about valor? There's a difference. I suppose the courage and strength. Oh, the guard is one of Cape's people. So <laughs> he's a coveted trait in the clan of strength, after all. <laughs> Mine is the clan of empathy, and our key contribution is... Growth serum! Oh, I see where it comes from now. What's empathetic about that? That is a very, very valid question. <laughs> I don't know, Kirara. Our ancestors believed that, just maybe, the dragon of old didn't mean us any harm at all. Perhaps the dragon simply didn't notice us, since we are so very tiny. Which is a valid point as well, because if you remember in Balborana's family's document, the dragon wanted the least loss of life as possible, so he picked a house to burn down where nobody was currently in it. So, you know, it could be true. So, they drank the growth serum and grew even larger than the dragon. I don't know that I'd want then to be larger than the dragon. they set the dragon down, calmly explained their perspective, 
and eventually taught it how to empathize. Did they shrink back to their normal size afterwards, or did they remain big for the rest of her life? Uh... And that's how giants were made. The serum isn't what it once was, though. Nowadays, it doesn't make you grow all that much, and it actually makes you lose your empathy. So <laughs> I advise we take a detour. <laughs> I noticed. Despite I noticed. Albizzi's words of caution, somebody, no doubt, has other ideas. Surely we could avoid a conflict with the guard, they think to themselves. If we could just try to understand one another. You could, of course, just take the path to your left. I was just looking at that. But some people are gluttons for punishment. It's all part of the experience, I suppose. Yeah! Let's go! Yeah! Oh, they don't actually attack. Oh, there we go. Everyone, I have returned. I come with the long-awaited Marquis and their followers to search for the lost origins of our clan. Well, we weren't told anything about that this morning. Get out of here. Leave us alone. The giant guards scoop you all up and throw you outside. No one is able to fight back. I'm sure the traveler would manage. Yes, I'm a glutton for punishment. We <sighs> go for round two. You and Albizzi only wanted to strike up a conversation with the guard. But since greeting you wasn't one of the items included in today's schedule, the relationship quickly soured. Had it did. If you're just got very violent. Your way in, why not consider taking the path on your left? Because it's so much fun doing this and, and thwarting your plans. Everyone, oh. I have returned. I come with Well, we text. weren't told anything about. Okay, fine. I concede. Or oh, we could do it again. <laughs> I can see. We'll take the path on the bloody left. Right. <sighs> you and Albizzi only wanted to strike up a conversation with the guard. But since greeting you Oops. wasn't one of the items included in today's Oops. schedule, the relationship quit. Why is my own clan treating me like a villain? I wasn't You've wondering the same long. thing. We all have. It feels like we've been waiting forever. Which way do you want me to go? Oh, this way. And we're in. Oh, you have a vault too. Oh, but your key's right there. We should be getting close. Why is this place so <clears throat> full of junk? Are you the kind of people who never throw away the box when you buy something because you're worried you won't be able to return it without the original packaging? Uh, we'll never find the Oracle Pillars in all this mess. Never mind that. We have a more pressing issue. It seems there's a slight problem with my clan's family crest. The Marquis may need to utilize their wisdom to solve the issue. What do you mean a slight problem with your family crest? Ah, shite. I mean, it looks like it just goes in a circle and then in, right? Wisdom too, huh? Well, you guys have a bit of everything, don't you? Except empathy. <laughs> Alrighty, let's just clear this trash out. Over first. here! Get out of here. Yes! Keep the noise down! We don't want to alert the guard. What you gonna do about it? I'll, uh, I'll go keep watch. Can't you destroy the boxes a little more quietly? No. Okay, where you're the... The middle one is the main. Okie dokie. In that case, yes, we're going to go this way. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I can go in literally any direction. Oh, wait, sorry, you're the main one. My apologies. I misunderstood. Uh, if that's the case, we're going this way. T. 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 Now that. This is the last one. Goddess's Manuscript 3. Galileo and Alberto did many good deeds again today, though it was mostly tiring to help the old lady on the bridge move her barrels of hard apple cider. It's interesting, this is the second one that mentions an old lady. The first one didn't, but the second one did. He bought a book off on old lady. And was she not on the bridge as well? They each got a small barrel as their reward. The moonlight was unobstructed and beautiful, and the two good friends climbed up the high wall that had been built to stave the evil dragon off. Alberto lost the rock-paper-scissors match. 
so he had to hold the barrel of cider under the crook of his arm as they climbed the ladder. Look, this is the big house that our chubby chief was so proud of. Doesn't look so big from here, huh? said Alberto as he looked down at the house. You're wrong. That's my home, said Galileo. The chief's house is that one. Alberto's night vision was not all that good, and moonlight could never compare to daylight. If one were to close one's eyes, the light could not be seen at all. He tried a little harder, but could discern nothing more. But it's also really small, Galileo continued, so there's nothing wrong with this statement. Galileo and Alberto were both rather perceptive people. Galileo's reply covered for Alberto's dis I'm assuming it's discomfort, not discomfort, regarding his poor vision. While Alberto also lost the paper, rock, paper, scissors match on purpose so that he could carry the cider barrel because the gears under Galileo's ribs were injured. Oh my god, you guys are so sweet to each other. Here's to you. The two friends raised a toast once Alberto stuffed a cork back into the barrel. The next day, the two gathered everyone in the village plaza. First, they apologised for the collapse of the anti-dragon wall and told all the people that they were preparing to have a talk with the evil dragon. I know it was a lot of work for everyone to fix that wall, but we're not that fussed about it anyway, the chubby chief said. But are you sure you're not bragging when you say you knocked it down yourselves? Of course, that was not the chief's point. He too was a good person. He continued, Also, it's too dangerous to seek the dragon out. Don't worry about us. And so the two best friends in the whole world departed. The evil dragon trembled before Alberto and Galileo. For some reason, the old lady's liquor could make people grow very, very large. That was how they accident wasn't. How was the book relevant in the second one? I don't quite recall. Uh, that was how they accidentally squashed the high walls the previous night. As they gazed down at the ground far below, they more or less understood how the dragon thought. No wonder it could accidentally destroy the village at its feet. So long... So as long as they could get the dragon to notice people, they could surely come to an understanding. See, same pattern. The two friends thus drank all the remaining magic cider, becoming even larger than the dragon by a good margin. <coughs> Reeking of alcohol, they sandwiched the dragon between them and drunkenly tried re uh... Tried something with it. A reasoning. I'm sorry, that looks like a two-character gap. That also looks like a two-character gap. So I was like, what word do I know that has two letters here? I'm so sorry. Tried reasoning with it. The dragon shriveled up in terror, all of its majesty, and fell aura forever gone indeed. It looked even kind of pitiful. Alberto attempted to pick dirt off the scales of the dragon's back, but wound up picking off an entire scale. <gasps> Ow! The dragon sought to flee, but Galileo, fearing that the crisis might persist for 10,000 years more if the misunderstanding was not cleared up, tugged its tail and dragged it right back. To be honest, we've always lived under your feet, but we are far too small, so you may not have ever seen us. Now we've transformed and become, burp, big. Galileo said, so now, surely, you must know that we dwell at your feet. The dragon nodded repeatedly. And thus did the two and the dragon chat all night, and believing the goal of mutual understanding achieved, the two set off along the road home. A. A. The signature. So it's true. Empathy is one of the founding virtues of Constellation Metropole, too. Just as we suspected, all three are the truth. Uh, uh okay. Well, this is a lot to process. I, I feel a little empty inside. Yes, we found the truth but there's too much truth wouldn't that make you feel full i get you it's like in inazuma when there were only six books in the mirage warrior series it was really popular but by the time book number 88 came out 88 wanted to read it i all lost interest one piece it is not clearly a brief moment of joy is drowned out by a growing feeling of melancholy <clears throat> but perhaps there is a glimmer of hope to be found too i mean i don't feel melancholy Anyone? Anyone? All right, I'll say it. How is it the case that these three versions of history can all be true at once? Because only one of them has actually... Sorry, rephrase that. One of them has a clan actually slaying the beast, and that was the first one, Capes. The other two just have them reasoning with the dragon and giving him empathy. And, God, I've already forgotten the second book. Stealing his wealth. 
So I would say he had his wealth stole on the poor guy. He then got abused by enlarged wood soldiers. <laughs> poor guy. And then he got the shit beaten out of him <laughs> and killed. So, you know, they're all true. Just they're not chronologically happening at the same time. This poor dragon. That's exactly what Paimon was wondering. But Boborano kind of already explained it away earlier. So Paimon was worried she'd look stupid for asking the question. <laughs> it's not a stupid question at all, my dear little pixie. While I did postulate that different truths may coexist, there is an issue when it comes to these three truths in particular. They're all signed AA. The problem is, all three truths are the history of the exact same thing. Namely, the dragon and the Metropole's origins. Yet all three bear the signature, showing that they're genuine. Suddenly, the sound of a bell rings out. I already gave you my answer. It may not be the answer the game gives me, but that was my answer. Escape oh, from the Clan of right Empathy's once. Sacred Site. What does that mean again? Ah, yes! Highest level of emergency! Everyone to the main entrance! Stat! Bring all the glue traps and place them outside the gates. The whole city is on the lookout and there's only one way out. It's the path right in front of you. I don't think the whole city is on alert. Lose the giant the guard. Any? Also, why is one ring the highest level of emergency? Obviously right? because you have to respond fast when it's an emergency. It'd be a bit too late if they waited till... Oopsies. They're outside. After them. Really? It's a side-scroller? No, it just gave me a really weird angle. Good grief, who's gonna pick all this glue up? Who's gonna scrape it off the ground? Not I. You're not even- I was like, he's not even shooting at me. Uh, shooting is irrelevant right now. Bye! I'm just gonna go this way. That was fun. I enjoyed that. <sighs> we made it out. Don't know if we'll still be needing this clockwork key, but I yoinked it out before we ran, just in case. Of course you did. Okay, but back to the truth problem. There are three conflicting versions of the truth, and somehow they're all still true. What is that supposed to mean? It didn't all happen at the same time. Why is this such a difficult concept to grasp? I don't know. I doubt anyone here in Simulanka can make sense of it. All we do know is that any manuscript bearing her signature has to be valid. Her. Is A.A. the goddess of prophecy? I'm a little confused. Well, she oh, is fate. the goddess of fate, the creator of all this. And all these manuscripts are her grand design. The reason we argued about who was right was that we didn't know enough about the truth of the past. But now we have the truth. So we just have to accept it. As surely as we will follow the clockwork path designed for us, so is this the course that history has taken. It is clear and incontrovertible. Please tell me we're not just leaving it there. That there is more that is going to happen with these truths? We will never argue again. Ah, thank you all. Is that all there is to it? Right? <laughs> is this where the decision made at the, first the crossroads of destiny has led us to? Pointlessly happy ending. Right? I'm so unsatisfied. Uh, overthinking it would be equally pointless. Well, that's enough for one day. Time to take a break. Could you be any more cryptic? You're planning something. Paimon knows it. Whatever happens, today was a breakthrough in my journey of discovery. Can we get a part two? I will go back and share it with my clan. Please, can we get a part two? I am vastly entertained. Me too. And me. Let's leave it there for today then. I'm sure we'll find out what else Mr. Narrator has planned for us tomorrow. Yes, please. I'm all for this. Yay, narration footnotes. Wait until 8 a.m. the next day. Oh, that's also going to trigger my other quest. Sorry, I just got more water and then I thought I was getting out of my menu. No, we're not getting out of the menu. We need to pass time first. Oh, 801 again. I'm very good at going to 801 apparently. Okay, where do you want me? What a beautiful day, thought the traveller, before she was overcome by a creeping sense of foreboding. <laughs> the voice in her head you say. louder. Must oh, that's in the city. Go to Pendulum Lane. I can do that. 
I can go to Pendulum Lane easily enough. What the hell is that? What is that symbol? Is that a page that's just chilling? Is it higher than me here and higher than me up here? Like, it's not even in, like, paper form? Okay, no, it's still higher than me. Okay, I'm just going to take this up. Although I can't see its up symbol when I... Oh, yes, I can. Tell what level I have to go on to. Here. Okay, so halfway up... All right. Halfway up, it says enough is enough. So, back down we go. Wah! Is it under the stairs? No, the stairs are not hollow. Still lower than me. No, and now it's on the level. Huh? I am vastly confused. <laughs> and this is back where I was. And it's going to say it's up above me. I'm so perplexed. I don't understand. <sighs> up we go. I don't know what this is or where it is. It might just have to remain a mystery for all eternity. Because I've got nothing. See, it says it's on the same level, but like... Should I try climbing the building? There's nothing under here, so it has to be up there. But I didn't see it up there, whatever it is. <laughs> is it in one of the boxes? <laughs> oh, wait, are we going to come here? No, we're not. Oh, you aren't breakable. I don't get it. Huh. No, huh. On. get on the this. That should get you up there. See, 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 I can huh. navigate. And now it's down again. I don't know what that is, but I'm ignoring it because I don't understand. Anyway, where do you want me for the quest? This way? No, this way. Oh shit, has there been a murder? Oh my god, it's Cape! Was he slaughtered by Barbarano? Oh god, Sherlock Holmes is here on the case. Oh my god, Cape is actually oh dead? Oh my god, this is terrible! I don't understand. The three great clans of Constellation Metropole have finally made peace with each other. Who could have done this? Not Cape. What happened? Oh no, someone's lying on the ground. Cape! How did this happen? Cape! You idiot! Wake up! You need to revise your last words or everyone's gonna start suspecting me! <laughs> last words? What did he say? Detective looking dude. Chief consulting detective. I'm not going to tell you those words. Ahem. If I wind up dead one day, the murderer was Boberon. <gasps> Where's your loyalty, Albizzi? Ugh. You could have at least pretended to not remember it. I'm sorry, Boberano, but this is an interrogation. I have to give the detective straight answers. Nah, don't worry, Boberano. I don't consider you a suspect, nor do I have the authority to charge anyone with a crime. So are you the last people to have had contact with him? I can't answer that question faithfully, but possibly. My sincere condolences. You were travel companions, right? It's a real tragedy. 
I'm afraid it'll be out cold for another hour and a half. Oh, he's fine. Huh? I thought he was dead. Yeah, I know. It's despicable. Hitting someone in the back of the head is the second worst act of cruelty there is. The first being replacing their gear oil with extra strong glue. So, so murder doesn't rank up there? I suppose you can't rape, you don't have genitals, but yet yeah, murder? Okay. So, Cappy's not dead? Uh, his gears, metal frame and shell are all still in excellent condition. It's just his uh, energy supply that's been all messed up. You'll be right. Uh, wait, but surely you can't be suggesting that just because Cappy isn't broken, there's no need to go looking for the culprit. No, I was just grateful that he wasn't dead. No, no, there's a need, huge need. Yeah, unfortunately, this is rapidly turning into a cold case. There's no evidence and no witnesses, uh, unless there's an official clockwork pedestal, the goddess of prophecy, around here somewhere. Th th there is. We're literally standing inside it. <coughs> uh, it's, excuse it's, me. What do you think this is? Then suddenly, the long-lost dragon of old flew across the sky. Wait, what? I thought he was dead. Where? Where? Uh, I didn't see anything. Wait, why can't I move? Oh, my mistake. It was just a cloud. Or a bird. Or something. If only we could turn time backwards and replay the crime. Uh... Isn't that one of those, uh, clockwork socket things right behind you? Very unobservant for a detective. Ah, so it is. No wonder everyone here is suddenly struggling to move. Uh, Traveller, if you please, let's uh, recreate the crime scene. Happy to do so. Though it's the hero to you, sir. Watch history repeat itself. The crime scene's too chaotic. I can't make heads or tails of it. There isn't even anybody behind him. Why is the detective so close? He just falls over. You take a long time to notice. Oh, the detective is the first one to notice. Nobody well, hit him. It up. Cape was walking along the street, then he suddenly collapsed. He was faking it. What? So case closed? Aren't you supposed to investigate a little more first? Well, we literally replayed the crime scene and saw it with our own eyes. There's no need for any evidence gathering or powers of deduction now. And besides, maybe the truth is inherently strange by nature. <laughs> like how Constellation Metropole has three histories, each of which is the truth. I already told you, it makes perfect logical sense. But didn't you say Cape was struck in the back of the head and knocked unconscious? For all I know, he could have bashed his head against the toilet bowl before leaving the house, then walked here in a daze before finally passing out. Sure. As for why he might have done that, my guess is... Is... With the Supreme Clan question left unanswered and the tension in Constellation Metropole suddenly wiped away, he was looking to create a new source of conflict. Dude, that seems really grim. Only then would the city feel alive again. Uh, do we really think he's capable of that, though? Sounds like a pretty complicated conspiracy for the average Simulanka resident. Agreed. Traveler, something about the crime scene isn't sitting right with me. It just seems unnatural. Also, anything outside of the immediate area won't have appeared in the replay. Is it possible that something was missing from the scene? Yes. Well, why don't we search the area? Wait, what are you doing? Your job? Oh, we're... Uh, we're gonna head to Cappy's house to check the toilet bowl for signs of an impact. Mm-hmm, what she said. 